looking for a dating experience where high standards are the norm? Welcome to Luxy, the exclusive dating platform where quality is key. With an acceptance rate of only 10 to 15 percent, Luxy is designed for individuals who seek meaningful connections with people who match their ambitions and lifestyle. Plus, Luxy's unique income verification feature adds an extra layer of assurance, creating a trusted environment to meet like-minded singles. Join today to experience a premium approach to dating. Check the link in the description. Namaste and welcome back to another episode of The Sapient. Today, we have someone um, who is a very literate person, right? Who, who is very well versed with education and has, has done a lot in his life and also an author. Um, so welcome, Nicholas. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ganesh. Thank you for having me on your program. Very excited to be here. So how's your day going? You know, how's everything? So far, so good. Um, it has been a good day. You know, things got weird in, again in America mm-hmm. you know, after the election. So we're, we're yeah. back where we, uh, we started from with weird mm-hmm. again. And we're all kind of dealing with that, particularly yeah. out here in, in California and in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Got it. How weird is it, right? Um, especially for your country. Uh, now that the election is done right and there is so much time until the new president comes in yeah that's that's generally not weird when mm-hmm. the person who loses accepts mm-hmm. having lost and mm-hmm. up until 2020 that was a an expected thing in our society it's just sort mm-hmm. of you know kind of there's a lot in american government that depends upon the old gentleman's agreement right mm-hmm. And so when you finally get somebody who breaks the gentleman's agreement, as we Mm -hmm. did in 2020, then it calls Mm -hmm. into question a lot of things that were not codified in law, but perhaps Mm -hmm. should have been codified in law and should not have just been uh, occurring on a handshake. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, when you you have to count on people being civil and also when you have to count on people sharing the same facts. Um, That's Mm -hmm. been a problem for a little while in America is that we don't... um, we're a divided country because we don't all uh, absorb the same facts. We don't agree mm-hmm. on those facts. In fact, I yeah. remember a number of years ago, there was a, uh, one of uh, Trump's, Trump's uh, campaign manager in the 2016 mm-hmm. campaign uh, coined this phrase, alternative facts. Well, there is no mm-hmm. such thing, frankly, as alternative facts. There is a fact and then there is a lie. Um, mm-hmm. So alternative facts are, in fact, lies. And calling mm-hmm. them alternative facts is just another word for something that we all know to be a lie. Mm-hmm. So that's really the weirdness is living in a country where uh, someone will tell you something uh, that is sort of manufactured within their own news bubble, but mm-hmm. which is, is, um, is patently uh, untrue and easily mm-hmm. disproved, and yet they believe in it. Because it turns mm-hmm. out what people are doing in this country is they're manipulating uh, sort of the human capacity to hold on to a lie. Most people Mm -hmm. will hold on to lies because if you've made the lie so integral to Mm -hmm. your sense of being, then even when confronted with the fact that it's a lie, you'll still insist that it's the truth. Like people Mm -hmm. now who still claim that Donald Trump won the 2020 election. He did not win the 2020 election Mm -hmm. um, and lost lots of lawsuits trying to prove mm-hmm. that he did win the 2020 election. But, mm-hmm. um, and even you'd think after having won in now in 2024, they'd give up mm-hmm. that lie, but they haven't given up that lie. It mm-hmm. still exists as, as sort of a manifest reality, even though it is not true. So that's the mm-hmm. weirdness right now that we deal with. And I'm not sure how you can have a healthy, uh, functioning representative democracy in a country mm-hmm. where there are, uh, where we can't agree on facts. Do, uh, Nicholas, do you think uh, this whole issue exists because U.S. doesn't have like immediate threat outside their borders? Like you guys oh, are like very question. safe, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> for example, other countries are landlocked and they have to fight, right, sometimes. And 
you know there is tension in international circles but for us it's like it's rather convenient right because you guys do just don't have anybody else um do you think that's a factor i mean it's not something that i've ever thought of before but now that you bring it up um there's a, a there's a definite possibility i think that there's along with what you're mentioning mm-hmm. comes an american sort of an almost in, innate american mm-hmm. sense of, of global supremacy yeah. mm-hmm. um listen uh, for for any of us in this country who have traveled to other parts of the world we mm-hmm. know that there are many other parts of the world that are cleaner safer and better to their citizens have mm-hmm. better health care um yeah. and ha- are able to elect women without mm-hmm. tripping about electing a woman for example mm-hmm. we, we still have not accomplished that there mm-hmm. are also parts of, of the globe that have slipped into fascism um mm-hmm. we got lucky during world war ii um but we got lucky you know when the rest of the world particularly europe uh, mm-hmm. got people like mussolini stalin and hitler mm-hmm. we got fdr uh, who, yeah. by the way was not perfect because he mm-hmm. also uh, removed Japanese Americans, loyal citizens from their homes mm-hmm. and interred them in prison camps. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was not perfect. He was also, so, he was also a bigot. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not perfect over here, but we yeah. didn't get Hitler, Mussolini or Stalin, mm-hmm. um, to sort of exploit a global economic depression. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Trump though now, and yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sitting here at home watching uh, some of the riots that, that are going on uh, mm-hmm. around uh, the Jewish soccer team uh, mm-hmm. abroad. And I'm seeing in foreign countries a Trump mm-hmm. flag, you know, amongst rioters, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. anti-Semitic rioters, and realizing that, you know, look, this phenomenon mm-hmm. is uh, we're in with every other right-wing nut job running a mm-hmm. country or aspiring to run a country somewhere mm-hmm. else in the world as long as Trump is in office out here. Well, do, do you think, Nicholas, honestly, that Trump does have a kind of international appeal? I'm not sure. I know that when I traveled abroad, and keep in mind, I was only in France. So when I, when I was in France briefly during the first Trump administration, I kept running into people who were asking me, what happened to your country? Mm-hmm. Now, France has flirted with, the, with far-right extremists and uh, sort of a xenophobic crowd as well with mm-hmm. Marine Le, with the, the whole Le Pen party. Um, so far be it for them to cast dispersions on us, uh, mm-hmm. but they haven't elected them yet. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. They are seeing a little bit of a rise right now, but they, they haven't elected them yet as we have now elected ours twice. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that he's not the global phenomenon. It just struck me today to see a Trump mm-hmm. flag in Europe in the midst mm-hmm. of an anti-Semitic uh, riot that was a little disturbing well do you think they, they also use it as a selling point in other countries it's possible because he's so popular and you know you you can definitely get eyes on yeah. on, on whatever causes you're fighting for yeah if you have you know an elected president yeah. flag yeah um that gives you the mileage and the trp right yeah yeah it's possible i don't know mm-hmm. what the world would see in him Particularly well, as feel, he despises so much of the world mm-hmm. outside of our borders. Well, I feel like, right, like, because I'm an outsider, so my opinions totally sum up to zero. Mm. No, but, not at all. Um, yeah, so uh, if you look at the world as one, right, which is which is the direction that we are going to, right, That's right. in some in some ways, um, everybody thought that Biden would be more forgiving with other countries. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he's one of he he is probably one of the I would say the most aggressive presidents in terms of threatening everybody else. Um uh, and you know, threatening everybody with sanctions and everything. Mm. And ironically, Trump was the guy who kind of worked with more more countries. That was how you experienced it? Yeah, because you know, I, I still remember it was like um, 20 days when Biden came into power, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they sanctioned to threaten India, um, Brazil, um, Indonesia, like a lot of countries. 
mm-hmm. um because we you know everybody was buying russian oil right but india is not the biggest buyer of russian oil the Rus- biggest purchaser or buyer of russian oil is euro that's right so you know we buy our 2% of all our, our oil reserves from russia and they, they they did not talk to us it was not diplomatic it was very really rough they were like you know we are going to sanction you and thankfully our government was um now it's it's like very cocky enough where they said okay go ahead not a problem um and you know they had to back off and since then right um you know i don't know whether you're aware of brics or not um no. brics is like a uh, <clears throat> brics is like a 10 12 country summit <laughs> like just like nato right but the target is to um get out of the dollar system right like if, where dollar is your base currency um and that happened due to this biden's whole um i would say the drama right with just threatening people because the world doesn't work like that because it's not like 1980s anymore right right right, right. um but you know back in when uh, trump was there right um it was better it was better in terms of international relations um i really don't know about domestic because i'm not a domestic person but i feel like that's why a lot of you know foreigners like trump because it it kind of affects them too right how do you feel about trump's current rhetoric around imposing tariffs well it's interesting but um i don't know how your democracy works like I don't think it would be that easy to you know pass it. Well, right. you know, it's 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 true. It may be it depends. They'll have a very narrow lead mm-hmm. uh in the in the house. It's still up for grabs in the house technically. But they're projecting that the Republicans will ultimately triumph and have a very narrow majority. And then of course, those offices Uh, many of those will be up again in 2 years you know you'll elect them mm-hmm. every 2 years the senate they have their majority um but you know the next administration can just change it as soon as they come in it's right. it's true it's true but one of the things that trump did run on was imposing uh tariffs on yeah. uh foreign mm-hmm. goods and yeah. so we'll see I like how that, that plays out i like that to be honest because um let me tell you right back in 2014 India was so similar to US in terms of dependency of products um China and other countries mm-hmm. um and then we took a call and saying because China is our literal enemy right like they are ne- literally next to us so they were grabbing our lands so um you know India made a conscious decision of make in India it's a movement where uh, you know India is trying to come up with all the products that we require you know in in day to day life and now the result is uh we have our own private space like just like spacex right a space company um yes, and right. now we have started to export a lot of stuff um that was that was imported before you know in just 10 years so i feel like yeah you know going glo- uh, local right in terms of manufacturing even by forcing tariffs you know in india it's the same right if you, if you buy um um you know a, a chinese goods it's going to cost you so much more like it's like um the taxation is like 300% i think so even so even india like, imposes pretty strict tariffs on you yeah so that way you know you are forced to buy either you know other countries goods or indian goods mm-hmm. um and yeah that 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 has worked because you know india is a very cost conscious market so you know and i hope us is too and now when they see that there is so oh, much are, tariff yeah. yeah right just yeah. just use local you know just use your own businesses that's the gambit is that um mm-hmm. that imposing tariffs will do that um but then remember that this country our country the united states here has lost a lot of its manufacturing base and that's not just because of um uh you know a, a failure to impose tariffs that's also because of things like a uh, north american free trade agreement mm-hmm. um where a lot of that got exported out to our neighbors mexico yeah. uh mm-hmm. with its giant factories now um and the, you know the rest of central america and latin america mm-hmm. so um i don't know that that's ever coming back 
for a long time, the left in this country has really considered how America can develop new industries instead mm. of sort of pining for older manufacturing. Can we get into newer industries like uh, solar uh, mm -hmm. tech, you know, things like that, wind? Um, but I still don't think so. Well, yeah. you know, it's, it's interesting because the Biden administration has helped bring back some manufacturing. This didn't mm -hmm. happen actually during the first Trump administration. Trump promised it, but we, mm -hmm. we continued losing manufacturing. He also mm -hmm. had an opportunity to kind of tweak uh, NAFTA and mm -hmm. whatever tweaks they made to NAFTA were not helpful. Mm -hmm. It is, however, that group of people in this country who are the angriest and, mm -hmm. uh, and more, more than likely to be mm -hmm. Trump voters, even if Trump policies have not actually helped them. Trump, mm -hmm. Trump campaigning has spoken uh -huh. to, to their grievances and their culture of grievance. But Trump policies aren't doing much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the tax cuts for the wealthy, etc. They're not doing much. I don't know if the tariffs will do it either. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a fear in this country that all the tariffs will do in the short run is just drive up the prices of all goods at a time mm -hmm. when, we, um, when wages haven't come up yet to meet the rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me ask you this, right? Uh, it's a two-part question. Um, sure. One, um, that America has never tried this kind of tariff system, right? They've tried uh, it off and on at periods. I mean, in yeah. Sorry, in, re in recent times, you know. Yeah, that's right. You guys have not tried it. And um, now that you're trying to build the whole, um, you know, the auto, <coughs> sorry, uh, you know, the car industry back and everything else, right? Uh, in Detroit and, in, you know, in, in all the industrial hub cities. Yes. Uh, now, you know, there needs to be a stricter action, right, to help local businesses, definitely, right, by law. Um, and the second question is, um, you mentioned, you know, how Trump appealed to those people, right, who were at a loss. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's like the whole Kamala machine just didn't work because it just didn't connect with people because she has been off the ground for four years? Like she has lost. Yeah, because, so uh, that's a very yeah. good question. And I think uh, there's a couple of things is that when uh, when we take a look back at uh, losing all seven of the swing states, mm -hmm. uh, the fact is, is that if she had won the blue wall states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, she probably would have been on her way to a narrow electoral college victory and and a popular vote loss. Mm -hmm. She lost those states by 2%. So mm -hmm. we're, we have this narrative right now, you know, a couple of weeks after the election, she got slaughtered, this and that. Actually, that's mm -hmm. not really the truth. The truth mm -hmm. is that she lost by 2% mm -hmm. in, in states that she needed to win in order to win the Electoral College. And yet at the same time, she was running as a representative of an administration that high, had high unfavorables because of inflation, mm -hmm. that where wages had not yet come up to meet the rate of inflation. Rate of inflation mm -hmm. has declined dramatically in this country, but wages have not yet met it. So mm -hmm. people still are feeling inflation. Prices don't come down. You know, wages yeah. have to come up to meet them. The only thing that's happened is the rate of inflation has slowed mm -hmm. down. People don't really understand that in this country. And then the other piece is that um, she's a black and South Asian woman. And so and, and it would not only be the first woman that we elect mm -hmm. in a country that's frankly extremely patriarchal, but mm -hmm. uh, would also be a black and South Asian mixed race woman doing mm -hmm. that. And still and also had to run a hundred day campaign. So mm -hmm. even facing those headwinds, which mm -hmm. would stop anyone's campaign, mm -hmm. she still came within two percentage points in blue mm -hmm. wall states of getting an electoral college victory. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, while it looks initially like a wipeout, when you really kind of drill down, mm -hmm. um, given the headwinds that she was facing, she may have done a little bit better than, um, than, than we think, or certainly mm -hmm. not as badly as was first considered in the immediate aftermath of the election. Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you this, right? Um, in Trump's era, there was COVID, right? 
like yes which he literally the world was mishandled fought. right yeah but um your country survived out of it right yeah um, we survived and now when we are looking at the biden administration and we say um uh, you know like they had a tough time right and if you really look at it and you ask the question of um uh, what was what was the you know the primary thing that you suffered with was there a, a big thing like what was there one big event that affected people well okay right? for the administration then the yeah. answer is um you know biden administration successfully i mean successfully um changed the terms of economic depression yes just to keep just to keep the brand administration going on right um do you think that at this point of time both parties are pretty much same you know they just they just sell uh, what they want to sell and they do something else um uh, yes and no okay there's mm-hmm. a there are differences between the two parties there are differences in policy between the two parties um but i would say that uh there is an american machinery and there mm-hmm. are some things that don't change in the american machinery mm-hmm. we are a um an imperialist nation mm-hmm. we remain so mm-hmm. that policy doesn't change for the most part from administration to administration mm-hmm. now democrats may give you uh some you know for example harris will give you some acknowledgement of mm-hmm. what's happening to Palestinians Palestinian mm-hmm. children in fact who are not responsible for any mm-hmm. attacks on Israelis you won't get any of that discussion with the Trump administration okay well uh, uh, here is that's my... a difference in tone it's not really a difference in policy but nicolas does it really matter like no, do, do you no, think no it doesn't the uh, the tone do... and that's why i say tone uh-huh. as uh-huh. opposed to policy another area here is that you'll get consistent tax cuts for income mm-hmm. earners above $400,000 under a Republican mm-hmm. administration and mm-hmm. nothing or very little for people below $400,000 in a non-Republican administration those are some some differences that have meant a lot in this country since the Reagan era which mm-hmm. you know I lived through this um I was a teenager during the Reagan era and then in college Mm-hmm. and i watched the evisceration of the middle class in this country at mm-hmm. the at the behest of those kinds of tax policies the supply mm-hmm. side uh tax policies so there are some differences in policy like mm-hmm. that um and there's differences in tone but there is a machinery to america that continues a pace no matter mm-hmm. who's running the country arms are still going to you know parts of the world that we're supposed to be defending mm-hmm. I, i singled out israel but and th- that perhaps is not fair like there's, there's a lot of parts of the world to which our arms are still going yeah. no matter whether it's a democrat or a republican in office do you think it's time for us to say you know let's not worry about the world let's start fixing our shit first sure i think there are a lot of americans who feel this way but this country is always this is not a new thing this country is always vacillated between uh isolationism and being the world's policeman and we go back and forth and back and forth and this is where yeah we because were. it's it's just convenient right yeah and i mean the, the a lot of this is sort of the political winds of the time we've had to be convinced to go to war mm. whether that's you know the sinking of the maine or the bombing of pearl harbor uh we've mm. had this our population has been um isolationist at moments mm. and wanting to just be invested in our our people our citizens our politics mm-hmm. our economics and our uplift mm-hmm. um but you know there's there's we're still an empire right mm-hmm. we aspire to started to aspire to be an empire in the late 1800s and then mm-hmm. emerged as the dominant empire in the world in the wake of world war 2 whether mm-hmm. america is still that empire that it was in the wake of world war 2 today yeah, is an arguable so. point i don't think that it is either yeah i mean I it's, I would it's agree not on that yeah it, it today's world us is more of a, a clown circus mm-hmm. than actual power yeah right because um you 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 know like american healthcare is famously fucked yes it is right 
um and you know lot of you know cities who have rapid homelessness spent billions not solving the problem right yes that's correct so that kind of exposes the underbelly of the us society where you're like okay then you know what's really going on right um and i don't think anybody is asking these questions they're just more concerned about um you know which party do i vote yeah you know these are good uh this is this is a good area to to pursue in in this um in your podcast here so you know um so I've written, I'm an academic, I'm a professor, but in order to appeal to sort of a wider audience, I've written uh, a detective novel set here in Oakland. And one of the things I'm trying to do in that novel is I'm trying to talk about some of the issues that you just mentioned. I have, my first novels come out, People's Detective, and it's about sex trafficking here in the streets of Oakland. Um, this is uh, a form of slavery, okay? A problem mm-hmm. that we see globally, and we definitely have it here. We have it here mm-hmm. in the space where I live. It's one of the third hotspots. The second book, which I am writing right now, is about homelessness uh, in mm-hmm. the streets uh, around me here in Northern California. These are, mm-hmm. are are problems that a lot of the world deals with, and mm-hmm. here we are, you know, the great empire, and we deal with them as much as any other part of the world. Uh, deals mm-hmm. with these issues too. You know, for example, um, a couple of years ago, well, really in, in 2023, okay, there were mm-hmm. over 36 million reports in this country of mm-hmm. um, just child sexual exploitation alone. With the region mm-hmm. that I live in, uh, Oakland, Alameda County, the San Francisco Bay Area, this region being the third highest hotspot in the country. Mm-hmm. That has a lot to do with the fact that we have a large Pacific port to which mm-hmm. a lot of goods flow. You know, we were just talking about tariffs yeah. and, and the flow of goods. Well, uh, human trafficking flows through those, those ports too, mm-hmm. illegally, and through, yeah. the co- and through the country across the mm-hmm. highways. And um, look, there's an estimated hundred, there's anywhere from 100,000 to about 300,000 people who are victims of this every single year in the United mm-hmm. States alone yeah yeah um i also read a report that said um, there are more people in uh, you know uh, more people affected from human trafficking in today right in today's world than that's ever right. in the history of the that's know, right Earth. that's right it's a continuation of something that we think uh, mm-hmm. global doesn't that exist. we've gotten rid of yeah we yes. think it doesn't exist but it, it's a continuation of something uh, mm-hmm. that is, it is basically Ganesh, it is slavery. And, the, yeah. and this, this is kind of the way that I wanted to deal with it uh, fictionally. And there were reasons why I decided to do this uh, through fiction as opposed mm-hmm. to through an academic book. And some of that, well, everything about that had to do with access and cost. Mm-hmm. You know, I write a piece of fiction and frankly, I can sell that for less, right? Mm-hmm. More yeah. people can get access to it, right? My academic books, you're going to spend $30 for them. A piece of fiction, you're going to spend mm-hmm. less than half. And then yep. a third of that if you're just using an, an ebook. And then you can mm-hmm. get it used at some point in time. So I can yeah. get a wider readership and get people concerned. And the mm-hmm. other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to plug the narrative. I wanted to plug uh, with the narrative. I wanted to plug organizations that are fighting this. So the mm-hmm. end of my novel has a, um, a glossary. Mm-hmm. Uh, of, um, excuse me, an appendix of mm-hmm. organizations that are fighting sex trafficking here in this region and throughout mm-hmm. the United States. Yeah. Do you think there needs to be more like harsh and stricter law around this issue? Yes, I do. And, and much more enforcement attention to it. Listen, mm-hmm. all the global problems that we began your podcast discussing, particularly Mm -hmm. the the larger global economic problems, where Mm -hmm. the rubber meets the road on any of our streets is in Mm -hmm. problems like this, around people being trafficked. Mm -hmm. This doesn't exist if there isn't money to be made. And slavery is something that has always made money. And it it has always been the gift that keeps on giving. One mm-hmm. slave who can be used over and over and over again. 
mm -hmm. um, in perpetuity. Yeah. Uh, and then killed, frankly, when uh, when the police are hot on your trail. Mm -hmm. And so when you're facing, you know, I think this is part of a global, uh, the broader global economic crises that mm -hmm. we've seen and the concentrations of wealth that we've seen in, in this world, in the United yeah. States and, and, and abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's also kind of worrying when governments don't give a shit about it, right? That's like right. They're like, yeah, you know, this problem exists. We could do something, but... You know, we, we, we just not going to do anything, right? Yes. And I think, you know, the, the, the interesting question about that is, so, you know, okay, I, in writing a piece of fiction, I, I have to speculate, okay? There's a lot mm -hmm. that's speculative. And one yeah. of the things, I'm not going to give away the plot because I'd love for your listeners to read this, mm -hmm. but um, look, in speculating about this, my, there's a, this fundamental question of why does this continue? Mm -hmm. For example, you know, another phenomenon that's parallel to this that continues is femicide in places mm -hmm. like Mexico to our southern border. Mm -hmm. uh, it just continues. You're in, yeah. you're out. You never catch mm -hmm. anyone. So I try to answer this question in the novel. And my answer in, sh in short for this mm -hmm. is it continues because powerful people are protecting it. Yeah. So if you want to know why it's not stopping. Mm -hmm. It's because there are people who are um, who are profiting from this, who yeah. are powerful. Now they're not on exactly. the they're not on the street doing this, but they're yeah. somewhere up the chain, right? They, uh, they, we're not just talking. They about, get their cut. That's correct. They get their cut. These are mm -hmm. not petty criminals on the streets, yeah. but mm -hmm. somewhere, and they and the petty criminals may not even know to whom they're ultimately connected. But it's kind of like the <laughs> drug trade, and this is yeah. sort of this is the only trade sex mm -hmm. trafficking that is second to the drug trade. It's just right behind yeah. the drug trade, okay? Mm -hmm. And we know how profitable yeah. that has been globally. Mm -hmm. well, we know that there are very powerful people up the chain who yeah. are running for offices, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, who are in government, yeah. um, who are aware that this is going on, who are taking mm -hmm. their taste and then yeah. some, and who will never mm -hmm. be arrested. Yeah. And so that's, and if, that's why. And even if they're... Even if they're convicted and arrested, they just disappear. That's correct. Yeah. Right? And, and this is why, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. so this is what I speculate on the, in, in the book. And I speculate mm -hmm. on this too. The way that I deal with this is that there's a little bit of Oakland history that I get into as well uh, mm -hmm. in, in kind of exploring uh, the depths of, of who might be behind this. But I do portray a city government uh, policing structure an author, a structure of authorities that are in on the uh, on the game, mm -hmm. their hands are, and that has been reported out here. We've had recently Oakland mm -hmm. police who uh, have been tried for mm -hmm. sexually exploiting uh, and trafficking mm -hmm. a uh, an underage prostitute. Those these mm -hmm. are our police that have, yeah. that have been involved in this. Mm -hmm. and, and if you think that just officers on the street are doing this without mm -hmm. anybody knowing. In yeah. fact, Ganesh, you know, one last thing I'll, I'll say about this is that I was at a book fair uh, last mm -hmm. year. And this was sort of the, I was getting people to sort of look through the first draft of the novel. And there was mm -hmm. a San Francisco, uh, I was in San Francisco for this. And there was a, a San Francisco uh, police officer, retired police officer, who came by my table. And I said, oh, this guy's. I said to myself, he's going to hate this, okay, because, you know, I, mm -hmm. I give the Oakland police a pretty rough time for their history mm -hmm. of corruption. I mean, it's all out there. We know that they're corrupt and they've been corrupt. He stops by the table and instead what he, I tell him about the narrative and he says, listen, I used to work vice in San Francisco. And he says, I'll tell mm -hmm. you that what you're writing about here is happening. And he said, even mm -hmm. when I worked vice, he said he found a motorcycle cop who mm -hmm. was trafficking women mm -hmm. and then dumping their bodies off on the side of the road, you know, use and abuse people. And if, when he went, came to punish them, he'd drive them on out and dump them off on some road, you know, mm -hmm. uh, headed somewhere in Northern California. Right. And he said, what he did, he didn't report the guy. Cause of course they have their code of blue and they're not going to report one another. But he said, mm -hmm. what he did was he beat him up, put him in his, in the trunk of his car and drove him yeah. out somewhere and dumped him off mm -hmm. the side of the road. 
Now, structurally, that did nothing. Yep. But what, but what he was letting me know was, I'm, I was on to I was on to what's really happening here. That everybody's mm-hmm. involved. Yeah. Here's a funny thing about fictional book about real problems. Yeah. Um, uh, whenever I talk to somebody who has written fiction about a real problem, they say that you know I imagined the worst and wrote this book. Um, but um, I wrote this book like two years ago and I thought this would happen in 10 years. Like That's this right. bad thing would happen in 10 years, yeah. but it's already happening. Yeah. Yeah, that happened to um, me, Ganesh. I wrote this, I got it published, and then the news came out about Sean Puffy Combs, a, a mm-hmm. rapper out here who you guys are probably familiar with as well. Uh, you, mm-hmm. you probably have heard a fair amount of the music that he's produced. And turns out that... Yeah. You know what, to be honest, I have never heard his music. Yeah, you're not missing anything. You're not missing anything. (laughs) You know, you're good. Yeah, don't worry about it, okay? (laughs) Don't let it keep you up at night, okay? Yeah. (laughs) I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. (coughs) But do do you think he's also going to, like, disappear, like Epstein? Yeah, I think either that or um, he'll just never talk about people above him. Who knew mm-hmm. that this was going on? But if yeah, of course that's that's yeah. that's a certainty, right? Like he won't speak about that. But he can't. Do you think? Yeah, it's too expensive. It is too expensive, and and you listen. But your logical mind tells you there's no way that he's throwing these parties on the regular, and the Los yeah. Angeles Police Department doesn't know that he's doesn't throwing know these about parties. It. There's logically yeah. that makes absolutely no sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah. knows that, that this is happening. And if you've ever been mm-hmm. to L.A. and been around people who are in those circles, you know exactly mm-hmm. what I mean. Everybody knows what's yeah. going on. It's, it's a, but it's also it's community. like this, right? It, if, if it was in like the middle of nowhere where he owned like a thousand acres and, you know. Sure. You know, yeah, of course, nobody would know about it. But he's in a city. Right. 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 <laughs> right. In the middle of it. And yeah. there, there's all kinds of people showing up from all kinds of different yeah. industries, you know? And if, if you know, like United States can find out a terrorist sitting in his bunker, I'm pretty sure, um, you know, you, you can find out a, a hundred people party in a city. I mean, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, but, and you, you know, your analogy is perfect. If you can find some guy in a bunker somewhere uh, yeah. in the middle of nowhere, you definitely mm-hmm. know what's going on with Sean Collins. Come on. You know, there's right. just in your own city, in your own city, you know, you know yeah. but, but, but you, you know, listen, and, and it's been going on for years. Yeah. Okay. And there's no way that people don't know about this, mm-hmm. but you know, th- this happens quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. The same thing can be said of um, any powerful person who you later find uh-huh. out has been to these parties, you know, the, the Epstein parties, the Island, where, yeah. you know, yeah. I, look, look, Donald Trump was at, these events. Mm-hmm. There's, there's pictures of him at these events. Uh, we've never bothered to ask him what did he do at these events. Yeah. I mean, Epstein is like you know? party. He's, he's a non partisan person. He likes he's everybody not. of all parties, right? Absolutely. Because the thing w- with doing that is that you get an opportunity to compromise everybody. And, pr- and, and I could yeah. make the argument to you that the reason why we don't know what Trump did at these parties is because you because nobody wants you to know what Clinton did at these parties. Mm-hmm. So I mean, there's maybe a uh, you know some Democrats at this thing and high placed yeah. Democrats and some high placed Republicans at this thing, and so we have yeah. the gentlemen's agreement. Because, We're not going to talk about this. Yeah, because politics is a business. Correct. It's 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 literally like wrestling. You need a heel and a face. You do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and you know. One cannot survive without the other. Yeah, and I think that it's really like a business if you consider that everybody who enters into politics comes out of well, politics you guys have the term with of, money when uh, they're done. Yeah, and you also, you guys have the term of be, calling someone a career politician. Yes, we do. Yeah. How yeah. the heck that's a term I do not understand because it's like this, right? Like, um, you know, I do I do social service, so, and that's my profession. Like profession is something that you earn from, right? 
and social work is something that you do um, out of your responsibility for the society. That's right. That's right. No, right? The, the, if you read the, um, so along with our constitution, yeah. um, there were, there were notes and documents that were written, uh, that go, there's sort of a command com- companion piece to that. And some of the discussions that people had around that were this notion that everybody would get to serve. Now, keep in mind, this is still a time in America when they're putting together the government where they only consider that white males are going to be mm-hmm. participating in the government and voting, and specifically white property owning males in the very, very mm-hmm. beginning. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, but there was this notion of what you call public service. You're going to go mm-hmm. in and then in, in Washington. Uh, yeah. demonstrate this. You go in, you serve your two terms, you're out. You yeah. don't do the career thing. Right yeah. now, we've got folks who are saying, you know what? I'm 80. Let's keep the yeah. thing going. Okay, let's run Biden. for another term. <laughs> yeah, Biden and now Trump <laughs> is about to yeah. be the oldest inaugurated president in American history. It's 78 years of age, and he'll die at 82, 83. So he'll be the oldest absolute oldness. Mm-hmm. There's no point. Yeah. And, he, and what's yeah. interesting is that young people yeah. are electing old ass men to... Yeah. Because uh, they don't have their offices. options though, Nicholas. They don't well, have their options. Uh, you know, I, there are options. There's, mm-hmm. I think, uh, a lack of creativity around those options, but there are options. Younger people mm-hmm. can run. We have yeah. had younger people running mm-hmm. before. I mean, but God, they God, this is a, a country that produced, uh, you know, John Kennedy. It, we can yeah. do this. We no mm-hmm. one. You don't have to be seventy-eight to run yeah. for the office. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but a lot, lot of candidates also withdraw. And by the way, Kamala Harris was younger. I mean, yeah. she was in her late fifties. You know. Yeah. To be honest, I really feel like Kamala really failed in her in her marketing. Area. Well, she had a hundred days. And he had been Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Years. It's like this. It does right? actually matter. Because it's like, you know, two people are writing exams and you know, you say, Yeah, you failed because you did not prepare you know good enough. Like you had four years, you were in power, you could have given uh, you know good subsidies at the end, at least to market better, but she did not. Well, here's the thing in America, vice presidents don't do much. And they and they don't get much mm-hmm. glory. And yeah. the real fault here is with Biden who initially said, I'm going to be a one-term president, I'm going to pass it on, and then he took that back. As if he had stuck to, I'm going to be a one-term president and pass it on, she would have been able to ramp things up for four years. And actually, mm-hmm. we didn't know until 100 days out before the election that he wasn't going to run because mm-hmm. he he ran. He yeah, ran. because he, do, he doesn't know what what is the like day and the time. You know, well, you know, it's not, I don't think it's really that, that bad, to be honest with you, that he doesn't know Uh the day and the time. But, you know, the the thing about Biden that no one gives him any slack for, Biden has a speech impediment. Okay. This is a country, I'm just speaking about America, but, but, you know, in the rest of the world, but people Mm -hmm. are not tolerant of disability in this country. So, but the same person has been, but the same person has been sexist and racist on tape. Sure. Um, and still, you know, you know, people like him and, you know, talk, talk about him as if he's the next savior. Uh, and I hate that. You, whenever people, you, you know, sounds like it, <laughs> but I mean, uh, I'm uh, talking uh, about uh, the both men. Sexist and racist. Yeah. I mean, no, I was talking uh, about I Biden. Yeah. I don't know where, uh, I mean, Biden has said some things in the past. He um, has said a lot of things, a but lot you, of things. But you know what? On I think, Congress flow, on record, on tape, on yeah, you know, I campaigns, think, right? I think that um, the black... no, the, the 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 reason I'm saying that is right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, for a common man or a woman, there is really not much choice. Um. Well, as long as we have a two-party system, a duopoly, you're right. There isn't much choice. Yeah. Even in India, we have like hundred political parties, but situation is still the same. Yeah. I mean, if you're, look, if you have more than, if you have only two choices, there really isn't much of a choice. Mm-hmm. And, and over time, one of the things that you learn, and, and I know that you've learned, India has learned this as well, 
is mm-hmm. that over time, there isn't much to distinguish one choice mm-hmm. from the other. There are some things to distinguish one choice from the other, but not mm-hmm. as much. The other piece is that it's not just that you only have two choices. It's mm-hmm. that you can't, it's very difficult to form new coalitions. Now they are, they do yeah. get kind of formed. You know, the mm-hmm. Obama coalition, for example, was not the Clinton coalition. Mm-hmm. Uh, the coalition that Harris was putting together was not the mm-hmm. Biden coalition. The Biden coalition was not technically the Obama coalition. They're slightly different voters, but it's mm-hmm. not as radical as you might see in a more parliamentary system yeah. where you are, you're called upon to create, to be very much more creative in the coalitions mm-hmm. that you're going to build. Yeah, but they're more interested in how much they can take home. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But what are we to do, Ganesh? You know, we mm-hmm. we can't remain cynics uh, as we live in representative yeah. democracies, and we definitely don't want fascism. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't. I know in this country, I don't want white Christian nationalist theocracy. You know, I'll just be honest with mm-hmm. you. I don't want to see that. I can't live here if that's mm-hmm. what the government becomes at some point in time. Uh, Because it automatically erases my existence uh, Mm -hmm. from the history of this country. And I've been here. My family's been here longer than any of these people who claim that, you know, I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, you know, what are we... You know, I read read a very interesting fact that said the most successful traders, like stock traders, on the planet is an American congressman or a woman. Oh, sure. But that's... They're the most successful. That's a question because, of opportunity and knowing when the opportunity I don't think is going to so. happen before it happens. Yeah, it's blatant insider trading. That's correct. That's why I use the word uh, opportunity. It is absolutely yeah. blatant insider. Do you want to know the percentage that they get in return of their investments? No, I'm sure that it's quite high. Yeah, it's 638%. Yeah, that, that makes it over time. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. No, no, but that's no how, not over that's time. How, that's how on people, an average trade, that, on an average on trade, an average trade, a congressman makes six hundred thirty-eight percent. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's how you walk in without anything, and then you yeah. walk out wealthy with everything. Yeah, I mean, right? I, I'm thinking about, for example, Congressman uh, Paul Ryan, who uh, had to, uh, I think, he borrowed against his family social security money or something like that in order to go to mm-hmm. school, and then he comes out of Congress. He's wealthy. I mean, he is absolutely yeah. stinking wealthy. And yes, it's a it's a question of listen. If I'm if I'm right now sitting down and I'm writing a law mm-hmm. about something, every law yeah. that I write is going to take a certain amount of time to take effect. But yeah. I so I can get in on the ground floor, yeah, before it takes effect. Yeah, you're yeah, right. That, that that's a little definition of insider trading, which is somehow legal. Right. Yes, it's illegal slash legal. If you can get away yeah. with it, everything in America is built on this. I mean, this is why uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby, is really the true American story. It, mm-hmm. it, I don't know if you've ever read that book, but it's the story of a bootlegger and his rise to mm-hmm. respectable society. This, you know, somebody mm-hmm. who sold illegal liquor when liquor used to be illegal in America. Now. The truth of the matter is, is that a lot of American fortunes are built on crime. The Kennedy family fortune, for example, was built on crime. Um, Mm -hmm. Most American fortunes are built on crime. If you go back to um, stealing land away from indigenous people, okay, or slavery, right, Mm -hmm. Uh, all of which constitute uh, criminal acts. So uh, American fortunes are built on that. The key is, as Mm -hmm. you just said, can you get in on the ground floor? Because that's where the yeah. real money is being made. Mm-hmm. So Once when are you planning to be the congressman? The What's that? When are you planning to be the next congressman? <laughs> I'm not planning on being next congressman. Although my colleague, I have a colleague, uh, a co-worker who ran for Congress <coughs> the session. She did not win, um, but she did pull down about 40% well, of the vote. Yeah, if they won, they could certainly give us some tips. You know, That's Ganesh, I'm, I'm, I, exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm just doing my thing. You know what I mean? Part of it for me is mm-hmm. just um, what's the best balanced uh, life that I can live, right? Mm-hmm. I've got, I've yeah. got my, my little slice of what I need for myself and my family. 
We did it the honest mm-hmm. way. You know, hey, it is what it yeah. is. Yeah, but it's also right at this point of time. Um, you know, like if you look at the whole situation, um, it is so easy to be a pessimist. Absolutely. But you can't be. Right. Yeah, you can't be because that's reality. You know, you, you cannot be pessimistic. That's correct. You have it's to get like, up and uh, you have to keep fighting. Yeah, it's like being sad on your own, um, you know, happiest day. You created the sadness. But, you know, the thing is, Ganesh, you can do something. Everyone listening, you can do something in your community. It might be a small act. You know, like we were talking, for example, about my book and, and sex trafficking. Okay, fine. If this is going on in your community, um, do something to help spread awareness about this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Get involved with a local community group that spreads awareness or some other issue in, Mm -hmm. in your community. There's going to be some small thing that you can do that brings some joy into somebody else's life in your community. And by doing that, you help yourself as well. You make your world Mm -hmm. a, a better place. So, there are still things we can do. The The absolute worst thing you can do is to be so locked down in cynicism that it drives you to inaction. And that is precisely, I think, what the sort of craven political actors that we deal with all the time would like for us to do, to not only ignore what they're doing as they you know sit there eating like pigs from the trough, but also, uh, you know, to, to just be fall into a coma of inaction Mm -hmm. so we can't do so we refuse to do that and listen i didn't i did not obviously you can tell from this talk i did not vote for uh this nonsense for donald trump Mm -hmm. um you know in my own small way uh when there's pain created as there was during the first administration i'll do what Mm -hmm. i can to resist that yeah and that's what i have to do yeah yeah I understand that. Um, yeah, because if I was American, I'd be voting Trump. Well, I think if you were American, you might yeah. not be, actually. You might not be. Yeah. I, think, I think outside, I you think that you might be. But, um, but Nicholas, the there is a reason you won. The, the, the reality of this on the ground is a little different. Yeah, but the reality, he, he, you know, he did win. Yeah, so and majority and, of people did like him. Yeah, that's correct, but that doesn't right. mean that because they, he did. Uh-huh. That doesn't mean that you have to. And the thing is, you brought up COVID earlier, Ganesh. It was an absolute shit show in this country around his mm-hmm. mismanagement of COVID and interpreting mm-hmm. COVID a pandemic as mm-hmm. uh, an affront to his personality and to mm-hmm. deal with it politically. And then to talk to us about taking ivermectin or uh, putting disinfectant in the body or a light in the body, things like that. Or asking people stupid questions like, can you fire a nuclear missile at a hurricane and all kinds of nonsense. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, he's an absolute idiot. He's not going to manage well. He didn't manage well then. And he, did, and he left. Everybody seems to have forgotten January 6th. He, the last that we saw of him in his last administration, he was leaving D.C. with 25,000 National Guard troops guarding our government buildings. It was an absolute shit show here. And I get it. You know, Americans Do care. Do you think the other party got so desperate that they did, did that? Like, this is like an unfiltered question from my side. Because so, I, it, it almost it, feels like... Um, do you think the other party was so desperate to get back in power that they had to do everything in their power in their power to kind of you know take things in their favor because it is very clear from outset that biden's administration is probably the worst one in the in recent times on what basis well on on a simple fact or a theory that you know, the Biden administration recategorized or literally redefined an economic depression. 
they say no no you know if if inflation goes to a certain percent it's not economic depression anymore i mean technically by any play. measure by any measure we weren't in an economic well depression. you were well you were um, we were at the end of the trump right. administration yeah because that was COVID. but during it. biden administration you guys literally um not you guys but you know the american government literally redefined economic depression what they did was they engaged you, so no no so my question is do you think how careless that is in terms of the world view it is so selfish to the core that i am going to redefine something just so that the federal bank um, you know the federals um, but also world as one is going to suffer from this one small decision yeah i'm, I'm a little confused at the, at the question i mean so we engaged in uh deficit spending which actually began mm-hmm. under the trump administration mm-hmm. when he started issuing checks to folks that he had to sign mm-hmm. by the way he couldn't just let the treasurer sign them uh when we started mm-hmm. issuing COVID checks to folks which was kind of like mm-hmm. a little taste of a universal basic income during that administration yeah. so the deficit spending mm-hmm. actually started uh under the trump administration um yeah but wouldn't you say that was like justified because of the stuff that we were going through. Yeah, and, and for the same reason, it was justified into the Biden administration, the early years of the Biden administration. The the exigent conditions uh, remained. I mean, we were still clawing our way out of COVID. So it, yes. it didn't, those conditions didn't change the minute that Biden walked uh-huh. into the door. Well, then in if, if conditions didn't change, then why did this administration wanted to redefine the status or the indicators of depression. Let me tell you why I'm, you know, worried about that, right? Um, because <clears throat> every two percent that the Fed rate goes up, suicide rate also goes up by five to six percent. And it's yeah, not I'm only not, US. I've not seen that link to the suicide between the suicide rate and the Fed rate. Yeah, that's and also we've, not, been, we've uh, been the fed has been lowering uh the rate by the way too so yeah the suicide yeah. rate they have down. they have lowered for they have lowered for the last three quarters that's what they yeah. did yeah, before they that they were not cutting the rates they were just increasing that's correct rate. um so my kind of whole approach to this is just be honest right like if if a country is going through something you just say yeah we are going through a particular thing yeah. Right. Try not to redefine everything. Um, yeah, the, so the, just so that it favors the, you. It's the your definition of redefinition that I'm 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 a little confused about. Well, let me tell you this, right? <clears throat> uh, okay. What do you in 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 dollar value, right? How much do you think a person needs to earn uh, if they're middle class? It depends on where you live. Okay, if you live where no, I live, just an estimation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. It, America is incredibly varied. If you live, yeah, yeah, I know where, that. Uh, yeah, so if you live where I live, which is one of the mm-hmm. pricier areas in the country, you are talking mm-hmm. about uh, one hundred twenty-five, hundred fifty thousand dollars. So right. Now let's say that. But that doesn't uh, apply now, if you live in, say, Montana. You don't need. Yeah, yeah, much. no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just using this as an example. Um, if you said that one hundred and fifty k, right, is what you need to earn to be a middle class family. Mm-hmm. And let's say we made that as a law. And if tomorrow, when the wages go down for some reason, I will redefine that and I will say, you know what? Now a middle class is 110K, 90K, 80K. Now I just redefined the law, right? And I just I just made at least 20% more people you know, who were poor the middle class. Yeah, I'm just by redefining the law. Yeah, you're playing with numbers. Exactly. Yeah. That's my point. So I, if, I'm if, not sure where the if the Fed rate did that. Yeah, if the if the Fed rate just were shooting up mm-hmm. and we were heading towards an economic depression, you call it as economic depression or heading towards economic depression. You just don't redefine the numbers and say, no, you know, everything is hunky dory over here. Um, you know, everything is awesome right you guys keep going to the work and you know um even though the world gets affected by it i am i am very 
happy that my administration is safe from this. Are you are, so you're complaining about the Fed manipulating rates? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you know that happens during any administration. The Fed is not, constant, not... and the Fed is supposed to be working independently mm -hmm. of the political machinery, but it does happen during every administration that the Fed, uh -huh. because what the Fed is doing is it, the Fed is manipulating the economy. I mean, that is the, essentially the role of the Fed. Raising mm -hmm. those rates is about slowing down the rate of borrowing and attempting mm -hmm. to slow down the rate of inflation. So, mm -hmm. and they do that independently. And a president doesn't tell the Fed when to raise rates or not, at mm. least never, you know, it may have happened, but at least mm. never openly. You appoint somebody to run the Fed, um, that, that person does what they do based on their particular understanding of economics mm -hmm. in this country. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, explicitly not supposed to be a politically controlled thing. So that the president well, doesn't have the ability to come in and say, uh, I need you to lower the rate down to, you know, another quarter of a point, basis point. Mm -hmm. That is not the mm -hmm. way it's supposed to work. And and the rate... Well, let me tell you this, right? Mm -hmm. um, in 2022, right, the first first quarter of 2022, um, U.S. economy is shrank by 1.6% and an economic depression hits at 1.4%. And Biden administration said no. If if economy is shrinking by one point six percent, that's just economic downturn, not depression. Okay, that's the exact numbers. Um, and now by doing that, right, you effectively have messed with world economy. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because you 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 just downplayed a very severe severe problem. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Because if, if an economy is shrinking one point six percent every quarter. You know, there is not much quarters left, right? But um, I'm not saying Biden or, you know, one particular person, uh, you know, in particular. I mean, it is what I'm we do. Saying... It is what, what the Fed does here. I mean, your critique is really of of the Fed. It's like this, the right? Of the Fed and its impact on the global economy. Um, how, how your critique is really of the, um, the U United States um, Fed, uh, Federal mm -hmm. Reserve Chairman. And the board and the Federal Reserve Board and their impact on global mm -hmm. economies. There's no question that that, that it, well, they, there was this whole discussion Europe. of Biden. Yeah, but you know there was this whole discussion of Biden administration asking the Fed that could we redefine economic downturn, in you know, instead of economic recession. Like the fact is, at the end of the day, like you know, they did lie to people, right? Because. Um, I, I don't know why, but I think they forgot that it affected real people worldwide. Yeah, I don't think they forgot that. I mean, I, I think that, you you know, whatever they did was a gambit knowing that that was mm -hmm. going to happen. And that's the impact that a country like ours has on the rest of the world, unfortunately. Yeah. So how about you folks be more responsible next time? Yeah, you know, but it, you have got to come to America to understand why we're no, so damn irresponsible. I'm happy. <laughs> I think I think once you spend some time out here, you'll find out yeah. why we're so damn irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, <laughs> it just yeah, it it is that way, you know. And like I, I can understand uh, your point of view um, of just living there to see the experience, the American experience. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah, like getting yeah. billed millions for stubbing your toe. Yeah, I don't know, right? Now you're talking about our healthcare system and our healthcare costs. <laughs> you're you're right about that, right? It is insane. It is. Um, yeah, but you know, it is. Uh, it's insane for uh, for particular reasons, um, mm -hmm. and some of those reasons have to do with the role that we just agree. Yes, absolutely. I would say it's just greed. That's all it is. Well, absolutely. I mean, do you need to have as much money as Elon Musk? You don't. No. No. I mean, that that is a, the, the simple answer is you don't need that. Mm -hmm. But we don't have one thing mm -hmm. that we don't have anymore in this country is we don't have philanthropists. We don't have philanthropy. I mean, you do have them. We don't have it like. But we, it's. Yeah, but, but it's in the air quotes. Yeah, exactly. It's in the air quotes. That's the best way to put right? it. Right. Yeah, do you mind if I quote that at some point in time? Because you're right about it. Yeah. 
yeah, please. It's definitely in the air quotes. Um, the other thing is about this country is that we've really, Ganesh, only had about 40 years in this country of anything that represents a real middle class. And that came in the wake of the New Deal all the way up through the impact of Reagan's tax cuts. So you really get something between the 40s and the 80s, okay, mm -hmm. maybe late 80s. And then the middle class is really disappearing after that. This used to be a country where you had private sector and public sector unions. The minority yeah. of workers in this country now belong to a union and have somehow mm -hmm. been deluded to think that the way that they can get their wages to increase is to argue mm -hmm. for increased wages for themselves as individuals. That never works. Mm -hmm. It never works. You're, yeah, that you're just works. fired. You're just fired. That's all there is. Yeah. When you walk in. Yeah. You have to have a union. That, the, that whole narrative is so dumb, right? It's extremely dumb, but people have bought into it. Yeah. The other yeah. problem. Even in India, it's the same thing. Yeah. Even and, in India. And the other problem yeah. with, with our country too. But Nicholas, do you also feel like governments hate, absolutely hate unions? Because it, it brings people together. Yeah, you know, it I, creates a force that you know. Yeah, I do, and I, I think there was there was no better sign of that than when I was a kid, and the Reagan administration shut down the air traffic controllers union. Now there were a lot of union workers who voted for Reagan; they believed in it, and they lost <laughs> their unions during and as a result of his administration. Didn't stop yeah. them from continuing to vote for the same nonsense, but he mm -hmm. he when he broke the air traffic controllers, that was a signal to every other union in this country. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not going to go down like this anymore. You're not. And, and really, it was one of the things that's consistent in this country is that union membership, when it was at its height in this country, was mm -hmm. when middle class belonging was at yeah. its height. Those two mm -hmm. things are consistent. And the drop off yeah. of union membership has gone along with the drop off in the middle class in this country. Mm -hmm. There are winners in yeah. this society, and there are losers in this society. And so you ask yourself, how is it that... A so you mean to say there are politicians and then there are people? Yeah, why not? Yeah, there are people... There are, are, if you define politicians as people who get 600% on a trade, then I would say, that, yes, winners. Yes. Right? right. They're the absolute winners in any situation. That's correct. Right? No matter if it's benefiting people or if it's like putting people more down. Right. That's correct. Let me ask you this, Nicholas, because you're well versed in uh, academics. And of course, you know, <clears throat> you understand government so much better. Do you think that the whole frame of government, like how it's formed, is anti-human evolutionary? Because it, it doesn't let people unite because every government is keen on dividing people. Because that's how they will you know, survive, even if they do some bad shit. They don't want to, uh, you know, every government always looks to control people through money, property, and just freedom, right? Do you think this government frame is anti-evolutionary? Because we are not going to evolve from here. Because it, the government is just stopping us at this Yeah, I, I don't know if I would, I, I think... I understand where you're coming from with the term anti-evolutionary. Um, because look at what they did to the crypto. They said, yeah. you know, crypto can be used to launder money and, you know, uh, trade narcotics. Guess what? That's what even American dollar can be done too. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. But um, every government is afraid of crypto. Yeah. Every of government is afraid of not getting information on people, yeah. like dirt on people. Yeah. Um, and they're definitely afraid of people uniting. Yeah, I think that the word that I would use, I'm not disagreeing with your word, by the way. I, I agree with what I think you're, you're getting at. I, but I think the word that I would use is immoral. And I don't mean yeah. that in a religious sense. I mean mm -hmm. that in a deeper spiritual sense. And what I'm mm -hmm. talking about is respect for the human personality when I use the term moral, the respect mm -hmm. for all human personality. And I do mm -hmm. think that a lot of our governments do create laws that are mm -hmm. immoral and that are yeah. about what you suggest, which is control. Mm -hmm. You know, what we've seen this um, recent struggle here over um, 
the reproductive rights of women in mm -hmm. our, our country. It's not that anybody wants children to be aborted. That, yeah. that, that's not what's happening here. What's happening mm -hmm. is do women control their own bodies and, and are they able to make decisions over their own bodies or not? Or do, mm -hmm. do 80 year old men in Congress get to make those decisions? Mm -hmm. And what is a more moral choice? Mm -hmm. do, do, does anybody who loves anybody else, no matter their gender, get to mm -hmm. love and marry them openly without the fear mm -hmm. of violence or repression? What is the moral mm -hmm. choice? It, it, it doesn't have anything to do with anything else. So I think that those are the terms that I would use. And I do think that where I pick you up on evolutionary is I think globally, mm -hmm. as people, you and I, you know, sitting across all these, we're like 12 and a half hours apart from where we mm -hmm. are right now having this conversation, you and I could probably come to agreement on a lot of things a lot more easily. I think we have in this podcast. Yeah. People who lead us only because I don't have any interest in repressing you and you don't have yeah. any interest in repressing me. And because I mm -hmm. respect your human personality and you respect mm -hmm. my human personality. Yeah. If we and also I think that, we can do a lot. <clears throat> yeah. And also I think it's like there is this universal recognition that you are human too. You are human. Not an that's, asset. That's correct. Not an asset. Not somebody right. uh, who's going to yield me 600% uh, mm. profit. Not somebody <laughs> to be trafficked or anything like that. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right about that. Right. And if I go into the world when I see you, when I mm -hmm. encounter you with that on my mind, that mm -hmm. is an, a higher evolutionary state, as you suggest. I think right. that, that is where we should be. Mm-hmm. Because instead of fighting with each other, yes. I mean, that will never stop. Yes, um, but I'm not interested in fighting with you. I, I may yeah, disagree exactly. with you, but I'm not interested mm. in fighting with you. I'm not interested in jailing you. I'm not interested yeah. in repressing you. I am interested in breaking bread with you and mm -hmm. talking with yeah. you as we have done here. That mm -hmm. is the human evolutionary and moral thing that I think that you're getting to. Right. I mean... It's like this, right? Um, there is this Indian proverb that says, um, conflict only when necessary. That's Yeah, I'm with that. I love right. that. That's beautiful. And if governments ask themselves, like, is it necessary really to fight on this particular case? No. Then let it go. Instead of getting into arms race um, and, you know, finding ways of destroying each other more efficiently. Right. Which is what happens. You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and they, and of course, there are a lot of people um, who argue that arms race is what led to a lot of you know industrial evolution. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and let me tell you this, right? If if you ever want to use this, um, when you talk to British English people, and when when you talk about them colonizing India for 200 years, right? Uh -huh. um, they, they, they say that, you know, we gave railways to India. Yes, I hear that. I've heard that uh, before. And administration right? and all these other uh -huh. kinds of things. Because guess what? Yeah. India didn't have a thousands, uh, a civilization that had been there for thousands yeah. of years before the thousands British, of right? years. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, we forgot about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the counter for that is like, Australia, England, and Canada also got railways right. without getting fucked over for 200 years. That's right. <laughs> right? I wonder how that happened. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how that happened. Um, you yeah. know, in India's railway, it's very interesting. Um, it was, the, if you look at the British railway network, right? Mm -hmm. It was designed to carry, um, you know, precious materials from inside the land to the ports. That was the railway system, and uh, uh, it, you know, if let's say you were the contractor, right, of of a railway network, uh -huh. you would get paid from Indian tax money, right, at Indian risk. So, for example, if 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 somebody died, right, while building the tracks, uh -huh. you would get paid, not the employee. Wow. You would get paid, wow. um, and uh, you would get paid paid five times. So it cost five times more to lay a mile of track as it would cost in Canada or Australia in the same time. Wow. So it's like, 
yeah you know th- there are countries who achieved good rail and good railway networks without um, you know getting fucked for 200 years yes <laughs> and ar- arms race is also same right that's right you know like we can um you know achieve those technological advancement without threatening to kill each other right 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 well you know think about two um indigenous people here in this country yeah who uh who had everything taken away from them because you know some of the uh, uh the founders of this country you know jefferson wrote about mm-hmm. this actually uh would say things like um they don't know how to farm Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Sure. So, Why not? <laughs> and, and here we are in 2024 with a lot yeah. of our folks. Uh, my my son uh-huh. is a um, is a soil scientist, so I get a lot of this information. But we have a lot of mm-hmm. people here now in 2024 going. You know what? Maybe the best way to farm mm-hmm. uh, sustainably. Farm. Uh, well, yeah. it, it was the way that American uh-huh. Indians did it. Right. Yeah. Because exactly. guess what? They knew how to farm. They have been doing it for <laughs> thousands of years. Um, yes. So you know, it's the same sort of thing. I've heard that actually before uh, from uh, folks who I can only describe as um, imperialists and bigots. You know, that mm-hmm. India received uh, trains, its administrative system, its <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. from the British because obviously yeah. India didn't know what to do until the yeah. British came along, yeah, which yes. is, is utterly laughable. Yeah. But this is also something that we suffer from in this country, which you have yes. suffered from uh, that colonial mindset. Uh, mm-hmm. We also use terms like uh, white supremacist thinking, which we yeah. are burdened with in this country, too. Um, mm-hmm. And this country is one of the things we didn't talk about here is the fact that um, there's a lot of fear in this country mm-hmm. right now that yeah. is motivating our politics about the loss of a white majority in this country. Because that mm-hmm. is approaching; it is right around the corner, and this country mm-hmm. is much more diverse than people mm-hmm. want to give it credit for being. We have yeah. many more mixed race persons mm-hmm. um, in this country, and and um, than in any other place in the world. Probably. Yeah, that probably. Yeah, and um, you know, this has also happened in in Europe too. And this is what yeah. has prompted a lot of the fear and racial violence. Well, let's not talk about Europe. That's a whole different, whole different thing. You know, this is why you see you see the, the 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 rise of extremism again in Europe. Well, I think it's justified at this point of time. Justified because, how? yeah, because I come to a land, I say, you follow my law, or I'll kill you. Yeah, you say, yeah, man, you know, like fuck you. <laughs> well, you know, it was always inevitable. That if you mm-hmm. if you colonize the world, let's, let's say India, mm-hmm. for example, you colonize India and you extract wealth from India, all kinds <clears> of wealth, mm-hmm. right? And uh, that and you make England the center, mm-hmm. and essentially you make India the exploited periphery, right? Yeah. That at some point in time, just out of economic sense, people are going to say, "Well, let me go where the money is." So mm-hmm. I'm I'm in India. But uh-huh. uh, at some point in time, until we get our act together, which you have done, mm-hmm. by the way, okay? Mm-hmm. But at some point in time, so, so until we get our act together, we're going to go mm-hmm. to England and earn a dollar because that's where all yeah. of our wealth from our country went, right? Mm-hmm. So if I want a good yeah. education, if I want to earn, et cetera, I'm going to go. And this is mm-hmm. what people have done in the United States. So the United States has fomented war around the world and left <laughs> countries in shambles. Did you? So it's uh, well, you know the answer to that. <laughs> it's still doing it, and it's what, what, the, what imperialism is, and so it makes sense that people at some point are going to say, "Well, okay, this is where the wealth is. Let's let's go." Yeah. I can't earn. No, I think I think they became liberal too quickly, <laughs> without understanding the consequences. They're like, "Everybody is welcome," <laughs> until yeah. everybody was the majority. <laughs> Yeah, you know we, you know we have a very complicated history in this country of uh, anti-immigration. No, I was talking about oh, Europe. Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. perhaps. Um, yeah, because they were like everybody is welcome. Perhaps, and and now everybody is a majority. <laughs> right, uh, but the thing was that this was this was going to be the consequence 
of England yeah. being able to say that the sun never sets uh, the sh- the sun never sets on the British Empire. Okay, fine. Because the God Himself didn't trust British and dark. Yeah. So <laughs> right. So at some point in time, everybody's coming. Get ready. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Uh huh. Yeah. I like Poland's approach to it. Right. Mm-hmm. They're like, you can come here, live here, do whatever you want, but you don't get to tell us what we do because we are the original people of this, you know, land. Yes, but but Poland does not have a history mm-hmm. vis-a-vis. Yeah say india that mm. england has of of brutal murder repression colonialism yes etc. it does not have that history and so yeah. poland doesn't feel any guilt with respect mm-hmm. to uh this exactly is, this is kind of where this is an interesting phenomenon by the way too ganesh it's sort of where your uh racial and, and national identity positionality changes depending mm-hmm. upon where you go so as, yeah. as somebody from Bangalore in Poland, mm-hmm. you have a different positionality than someone yeah. from Bangalore in London. It's a completely yeah. different thing. This also happens to me as an African-American. So while, say, England or France or Spain or Portugal did what they did in Africa, when I go mm-hmm. to some place like, say, France, yeah. I don't. the French don't have any issues with me as an African-American. Because mm-hmm. my racial positionality has changed, they mm-hmm. don't have any sense of guilt with respect. To yeah. Them, right. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. and my relationship to them changes. My relationship is not the same to every European or every yeah. European American, even necessarily. Yeah. <clears throat> because that that is just yeah. simply what happens when you travel and you move around the world. Yeah, and you know when white people move they are called expatriates yes and when we move migrant migrant yeah <laughs> that's right there you go that's the most nonsensical approach i've seen you, Ganesh, <laughs> right. do you know who the most successful migrants are right now to the united states of indians America? no actually indians. you have been eclipsed by nigerians mm. there's a brain for better scammers <laughs> what's that better scammers <laughs> better scammers well but that, that, presu- yeah. that presumes that we're calling anybody a scammer, and I would not. Yeah, Indians are scammers. Yeah, like I would, I would, scam would never people. hear that come out of my mouth. I don't have the yeah, because... ability to say that, and I would. Exactly. You're not in the position to say that, but I can. I'm going to leave that when you, in your hands. I, I want nothing to yeah. do with it. <clears throat> yeah, in, there are there are scam Indians, you know, like every place else. Well, everybody's hustling, uh, you know. I mean, we got scam America's American scam, you know, that's what we do. <laughs> you don't want us migrating around the world. We're going to scam everything from you. So you, we are going to expatriate. I mean, listen, Amer- an American is going to come to Bangalore and sell you a national monument that you've had there for three thousand years. That's what we do. Yes. Okay, you are scammers yeah. too. Yes, but you're just a more class, classic scammer. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about the classy part, dude. Yeah. Uh, meaning, you know, you, you get away with a lot, lot more money than us. So the, in this case, what you're talking about <clears throat> is just the difference between what we call white collar cl- uh, crime and blue collar crime. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's 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 like from uh, petty theft to like scamming a bank. You know, you know what, Ganesh? I, I'm glad you brought this up. Actually, I, I know we're joking, but um, although there's a little bit of truth in what we're joking about, but yeah. um, one of the things that came up for me. In, in writing this novel was if I had a character who wanted to deal with very powerful interests who were doing mm-hmm. things like sex trafficking, right? The same yeah. thing is, is happening in my novel about homelessness. How would they go about doing it? A, a strictly violent approach doesn't work. Okay. You're out, you're mm-hmm. outnumbered. And so mm-hmm. I do have, and, and my, so my book gets labeled by Amazon under heist crime because uh, without giving the plot away, my character does say, okay, uh, maybe I'll scam. So the th- seriously, this happens in the novel because my thinking is Good. if you really want to get to somebody who's perpetrating uh-huh. a, a high crime like this, the mm-hmm. most effective way to get to them is get to their money. That's how you can truly bring them to them. Yeah. So if you can pull I that mean, off. I, yeah. You took the ISIS way. You know how we killed ISIS, right? Yeah. We just we just bombed their banks. (laughs) There you go. That's the way to do it. 
<laughs> that's that's where I think you draw the inspiration. That's where inspiration. I'm going. That's exactly where I'm going. Yeah. Nice. And that's a very logical approach, right? I think so. Yeah, because I was seeking uh, a non-violent approach, and it mm-hmm. turned into, oh, this makes a lot of sense, you know. And to yeah. do it within the context that I have in the novel of uh, of crypto, you know, so crypto is discussed in the book as well, mm-hmm. uh, as, yeah. as both a thing for economic freedom and a thing for. Um, let, let me ask you this: Did you take inspiration from how viewers took? Um, yachts from the Russian billionaires. Yes, I did. As an example. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, that's... Yeah, because <laughs> that phenomena has been happening out here. So we've had uh, oligarchs buying property out here as a way to launder their money. I think I think you guys are concentrating on the wrong kind of people. In what sense? You need to look at Chinese, oh, not thought, Russian. Oh, sure. They definitely are. Um, they definitely are. Look at Hollywood, right? Sure. Look at Hollywood right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do, do, do you remember that movie, The Interview? Yes, I do. It wasn't a good Do you movie. think they could do that? Yeah. Do you think they could do that today? Yeah. I mean, minus all of the anal sex jokes. Yeah. They could pull that off. That was such a horrible movie. It was like one long anal sex joke. Um, yeah. But it, 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 I think it was intended to be that way. Yeah, I think so, too. I also Do think, think the it's guys possible who made that today. movie were high while they were doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not possible today because the Chinese would say no, you can't do that. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Right? Yeah. I don't think that's a possibility today in terms of if you look at who owns Hollywood and you say, can we do that? And the owners of Hollywood say no, definitely not. Probably. Right. Yeah, they would probably because say you. Because you, you're hurting sentiments of my business partner. Yes, they would they would probably say that. Yeah. And they're not the only industry, by the way, where that, that something like that would be said. Well, <clears throat> the chicken industry of US. Yeah, I mean, consider that for many years in this country, we never talked about the Japanese genocide in Manchuria because the Japanese were trading partners. We still don't talk about it. There, mm-hmm. there are things that we do turn a blind eye to yeah. with our trading partners. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. There are one too many instances of that. There unfortunately are. Yeah. Right. But that's what happens when you have a world of butchers. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you guys went to war with a country for destroying two buildings. So Yes, that's yeah. right. We did. Yeah. And we went to, to, the, to war with the wrong country. For yeah. destroying to to uh, to build it. Guess what? Because you guys can't spell the country's names. <laughs> you know um, that actually is a real problem in this country, uh, particularly mm-hmm. when uh, American citizens are misinformed. At the time that that happened, uh, so I grew up in San Francisco. I live in Oakland now, but I grew up in San Francisco, and I grew up in a neighborhood that had um, a lot of at the time a lot of Iranian. American uh, businesses. Thank you for and, not saying Middle Eastern people. <laughs> all right. Uh, and what happened was that Americans, so people lash out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And one of the things that happened was we there were Iranian American businesses that mm-hmm. uh, had their storefronts trashed and had to yeah. put up signs saying, we're Iranians, not Iraqis. <laughs> Because Americans tend to go, okay, it was just, you know, it, it starts with an I, you know, yeah, the yeah. first three letters and are I, R, R, and it has an yeah. R, and it has an A, you know what yeah, I mean? That's so, all. So let's go for that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're surprised, I'm surprised we didn't hit uh, businesses owned by people from India, because you've got an I in there as well. It starts <laughs> I, with an I. Yeah. yeah. Let's go for it. Starts it starts with an I. Yeah. People look the same. It's close enough, yeah. right? Isn't it in the Middle East, too? Yeah. I mean, so yeah, we're, we're very ignorant here uh, <clears throat> yeah. ab- about the map. But, you know, mm-hmm. racial violence has always been pre- predicated on it. You know what? If, if I, was a, I was an Iranian, I, I would, you know, below that note, I would say, learn your geography, idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would too. But then they'd probably smash your business for calling them an idiot. So, Because that's the thing is <laughs> yeah. that, you know, in America, we're, we, we, we reserve the right to sort of exalt our ignorance. It's a, um, 
it's a badge of honor, you know, not to know. <laughs> being, yeah. being stupid is kind of misinformed mm. is kind of a badge of honor. Yeah. Um, also, it's like um, it gets weirder as the time passes because um, if you look at Instagram or, you know, any social media, it's essentially Americans making fun of Americans for not knowing geography or mathematics. Right, right, right. Well, the other you know way to handle that is to improve the school system, to actually put tax dollars into improving the school system. Well, then um, people would be intelligent and they would start questioning the government system. Yeah, so we yeah, should not do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, a uh, former general in World War II, talked about that and, in fact, uh, laid out what the, uh, you know, he compared costs of bombs with mm -hmm. costs of repairing schools. And so, well, you don't do that. For he's the, <laughs> was the last American president to ever do that. Has been done. Since. See, I told you. Yeah. I told you. Yeah. Because it's far more easier to export bombs than schools. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. And that's where we're heading. Yeah, that is where we're heading. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Nicholas, for being here. It's been here. great talking to um, you. Yes, yeah, same You're here. You're an amazing host. Um, you really are. Thank you so much, despite my cold. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> this, despite my sucky voice, thank you for being here. That's oh, all right. Um, and if people wanted to, you know, buy your book, where could they? Or you know, if they wanted to find you, where could they? So they can find uh, me at uh, nicholasbayham.com. That's my website. The book, The People's Detective: A Sunny True Heart Mystery, is available on Amazon. And if we want to put money back into the pockets of billionaires, we can shop through Amazon. But it's also available uh, through uh, Thrift Books, Bookshop.org. Uh, you know, look, it's global shipping, so you can get it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Published by Bootstrap Publications. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, again, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd welcome, I'm going to put this up when the interview is ready. I'm going to put it up on my website as my podcast, mm -hmm. uh, one of my podcast appearances. If people want to come by, drop by and uh, see that, sign up for my, um, I, I have a sub stack um, mm -hmm. people can sign up for after they get on my website, mm -hmm. they can find that. Uh, and I'd love to uh, get some international readership and critique, find mm -hmm. out if people learn a little something uh, about America and places like Oakland, California, by reading the novel, mm -hmm. The People's Detective, out on Bootstrap Publications. And guys, all the links will be in the description. Um, so just take a look at and if you really think that um, you need to talk to Nicholas, yeah, you know, his website will be in the link and you know, you can get in touch with him. Yeah, my emails. Uh, are there. Thank you. Yeah. And he did a very bad job of selling himself. Um, did I? <laughs> he is he's a very academically achieved, established person. Um, yeah, so just go to his website and you will be blown away of what um, he has done. In, yeah, in my, 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 my academic books are going to be on there too. So um, I have to list yeah. that page. So you can see the full range of things that I've done, uh, both mm -hmm. the novel and things that are more academic. I appreciate that, Ganesh. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, he's he's undersold himself throughout the episode. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> just go to his link and see. Um, Ganesh, because, are you telling uh, me you to know, be more like a congressperson? I am telling you to be the congressperson. <laughs> not All, like. right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right um yeah so this is the end of the episode uh, <clears throat> and if we have somehow managed to offend you uh, yeah you know you're welcome uh, yeah, you. and you know until next episode take care and yeah be peaceful